getting ready for the class. I'm starting to get revved up now. Hang on there. Uh, we always have fun, I think, at the classes. At least I do. You guys get me going. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's always fun to get together with like-minded people and those souls that are happy campers and that are excited about their health and vitality and spirituality. I love all that. You know, it's uh, the best place to be on the planet. You know, it's to get into that groove of feeling good and, and expanding your awareness and feeling whole and, and strong as the self instead of, you know, your emotions out there and everybody's using them and people are using you and you're just unhappy and trapped in the drama of things. And it's like, it's better to free yourself to where now you're in control. You're observing, observing life as it's going by engaging as you will. Remember the movie Michael. You know, you can be a spiritual giant and come here and enjoy the land, but not get attached to it. Play with it. That's all this is for anyway. These are just play toys. Everything's a play toy. Even relationships, I hate to say. Because when it all comes down to it, everything comes from the one. Everything. It might look like it has a different form to it, a different thinking process, a different emotions. That's the illusion. That's the illusion of creation. Because when you start dropping these, everything starts becoming one again. It's hard to describe that. And unless you've had that experience, it's hard to describe that everything comes from the same source. And when you drop the forms of things, that's when you really start feeling and experiencing how everything, wow, it's the form that, it, that separates the one. All the forms. Fun stuff. All right. So let's take a look at uh, God. some of these cases are horrible cases. And the sad thing is that there's no way I can get to all your cases and read them. I just can't not do that. Uh, we could set up a maybe a panel and a bunch of us just take off on them but uh, difficult so we've chosen the most uh, the cases that are in the most dire need um, but you have to understand that from that point of view everything else is downhill you know when you're in a wheelchair modeled with MS or Lou Gehrig's and can't talk or speak or anything like that Anything down from there is pretty easy. You know what I mean? Um, sometimes cases are easier than what they look. They're just time involved. You know, it, it, time is, is, this is why your attitude has to be changed because it's time to, to do things. And it's quicker than what you can imagine, but it still takes some time to do it. You just have to allow the body to hydrate itself and you have miles of pathways, interstitial pathways. So you really just takes time to allow all this agglomeration of acids uh, hydrate while you're getting the kidneys to filter, getting the adrenal glands up and running and turning on the kidneys, uh, maybe even the pituitary up and, and, and helping all these processes. So all these things just take a little time sometimes. The beauty of botanicals it speeds things up big time. It cuts through the chase, so to speak. It increases the fluidity of, herb, of, of fluids. Uh, enhances structure function of the cells. And so that's just what you're looking at. When you understand the human body and basically how it works, if you get into complications, not only do you become lost, but then you start getting into the world of theories. And if you haven't noticed, especially those in natural health, and I say this to some of you nature paths and some of you medical and some of that. You ever notice that one day this is the end-all supplement? Vitamin E or vitamin C or whatever it is, uh, glucathione or beta-glucans or whatever. End-all, you've got to have them. Next thing you know, nope, it's something else. Next thing, it's something else. Next thing, it's urine therapy or cure anything. And this and that. And you notice that these are treatment-based thinking. And treatment-based thinking isn't a curative thinking because you're not addressing the cause of things. So I always recommend dump your supplements. A lot of people are on all types of supplements. 
and some of it is disturbing the chemistry in your body because everybody's trying to play God and and think that fixing the glutathione pathway or fixing this pathway that, no and you never can fix pathways using the same constituents can't do it you have to allow for the body to be a food processor to be a chemistry processor and you have to look to nature and the type of foods that are designed for the human that's one of the biggest problems is the lack of understanding a proper diet for the homo sapien body man or woman child adult doesn't matter a hundred year old or three months old it doesn't matter we're all the same species doesn't matter your blood type we're all the same species you never see a, a horse uh, with one blood type and another horse with another and you can't have this grass or that grass because you know that's bull crap you have to realize the species and if anything I think we've proven over and over again with all the the looks of the the design of the bodies the physiology of the bodies the milks everything points to only one direction of the human being and that is a frugivorous species a primate species factual and primates are not omnivores they're frugivores some of these zoos are ridiculous they're feeding their their primates vegetables uh, why in the hell because there's like this one uh, trainer of primates in Disney World was telling me well we think that fruits are too sweet that's the illusion and you're a trainer of these animals the illusion is that fruit is, is high sugar and, and bad sugar I mean what a lie and those that spread those kind of lies are working for the negative forces the negative forces obviously do not want you to be healthy because their side of it is the opposite pain suffering darkness that sort of side control power that sort of side socialism that sort of side you were born here as an individual to have all rights of freedom and individuality but unfortunately we're born in villages or towns or, or cities or whatever in states or provinces or whatever under different controls again and when you have dictators and things like that you know you, you've lost your freedoms it's amazing how man is still in some of these real low levels of experiences on this planet so really a lot of there's a lot of growth has happened though from the 1950s when you know when I'm coming along a lot of growth and awareness but boy slow on the other hand and it's almost like now we're kind of regressing back a little bit so it's interesting to watch but you always want to check out where you are you know and what you know and the thing is is be be a, an explorer and an explorer is someone who doesn't use thought because thought is already conditioned when you read books you're reading other people's ideas and theories it's okay to get your basic principles of life basic principles of chemistry never change theories on that do but the pillars exactly the two pillars that are holding up all of chemistry never change acid and base that never changes pH factors you know are a big deal and when you start playing with pH factors and that's some of the problems but that's how creation runs you get in you play you 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 have fun but you know a lot of lives are affected this way and I suppose you know one's point of view physical bodies are nothing they're just like cars you get one one day you get another the next day whatever we do pay a little bit way too much uh, attention into the bodies as the end all God thing when really they're just a vehicle that we're using not enough attention is placed upon the consciousness of the awareness that's inhabiting the body which doesn't is not embodied that's a, a lack of religious understanding but anyway let's uh, let's tear up some of these cases here and see what we're doing I am 72 year old female diagnosed in 09 with one blood clot in lung Ugh. prescribed warfarin mm -hmm. took for one and a half years stopped on my own mm. uh, 2014 diagnosed with two blood clots in second lung again put on warfarin December 2016 came down with valley fever given antibiotic that had adverse reaction with warfarin Ooh. see that's some of the problems 
uh, INR reading was 13, hospitalized for two weeks. See, drug interactions, scary stuff. You never see herbal interactions, really. I've never seen them, you know. I mean, you might have an herb that's ineffective or vibrationally against uh, uh, you at that moment, and it, it can make you weaker. But uh, I've never seen it really send you to the hospital unless you have an anaphylactic shock to a particular herb that's in it. But uh, that's rare. Okay, so what's interesting here, if you ever looked at live blood cell analysis and things like this, and you get into that level of thinking, uh, any shift in the pH of blood runs the risk of, of changing how blood cells perform. Your red blood cells should be individual like every other cell in your body. It should stand alone in the blood. When they start touching each other or following each other like choo-choo trains, as which you see a lot of that, then what's happening here? Two things are happening here. You're eating cooked foods that are enzymatically poor and are gone. And two, you're eating acid ash foods. And that acid is getting into the blood even though the blood is still in calcium out of its basement layer of connective tissue, it's still creating a shift in pH, and any shift in pH. This is why you have a lymphatic system. And the scary thing is, uh, you wonder when you get interstitially constipated, so to speak, in the gut wall, and say most of the absorption of nutrients is in the small GI tract, the small colon, or the small bowel. And the small intestine is about 22 feet long. So most of the absorption of nutrients, except for maybe some micro trace elements which might be absorbed in the first part of the colon, but for the most part, most, even your trace elements down in the lower part, eugenium and stuff, a lot of this absorption is, is, is done primarily, again, in the small intestines. A lot of people see colitis and all the colon problems, but what you don't realize is that what's going on with the colon is also going on with the small bowel. Your, your wall of the GI tract, that includes the small and large intestines, are all cells with interstitial spaces. Everywhere you look is cells with interstitial spaces. So when you see the interstitial spaces, again, what's in those spaces around all the cells? Blood and lymph. It's physiology. Physiology and anatomy. I said, we're, we're talking right on just what, what it is. Understanding that the kidneys and the skin, we have to look at elimination. Medical doctors don't think of elimination. But elimination is key in terms of metabolic acids. So when that's not happening, you, we all know that the lymphatic system starts backing up and becoming agglomerated. Well, agglomeration means getting hard, sticking, you know, that sort of thing, losing its fluidity. And since the lymph system is more like the tortoise as opposed to the hare, then that even may compounds the problem. Well, the interstitial spaces in the, in the, around the cells in the small and large colon get backed up, and that's where you get what's called malabsorption. You can see it in your iridology as a thick ring, what they call the autonomic nerve ring, which is bullcrap. That is your colon design, and that ring, however thick it is or non-thick, determines how malabsorbed you are. And then you can relate that to the malabsorption ring around the pupil. It all relates. Everything relates. And so the absorption of that, the interesting thing is, what are we absorbing into the blood then? You know, and changing the viscosity and pHs of the blood in that manner as well. And then if you're a smoker, of course, that just compounds the problem because now you're bringing in acids. And of course, this can also go to play if you're living in a highly acidic environment where the air is highly acidic. What you breathe is going to go right into the bloodstream without the effect of the liver. And so you don't have a way of changing that chemistry or altering some of that chemistry. And that's problematic to the pH of the blood. Therefore, you start to see the agglomeration taking place. In a minor level, red blood cells start clotting. And who knows about the effect interstitially when the lymphatic system becomes so agglomerated, so backed up, how does that affect that 20% or so blood interstitially? 
and, and, and how does that help the clot in those areas? See, because blood and lymph share interstitial spaces. And just as the, 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 the lymph fluid is the dominant, the master of interstitial spaces, you know, when you have 75 to 80 percent of that fluid interstitially lymph, that only leaves 25, 20, 25 percent blood. So when that becomes highly swollen and agglomerated lymphatically, we're talking about acidosis, not alkalosis. Where would that ever come to play? Body doesn't create alkalis uh, predominantly, it's acids predominantly. That, that's, that's a fact. So when you see that happening, the blowback on the blood could be obvious there as well. So when you're dealing in blood clots, the first thing you want to do is you don't want to go to vegetables. You don't want to go to greens. You want to go to fruit. That, that's vital. You want to go to fruit immediately. Whenever you have a blood problem, you want to go to fruit and berries and melons. That, that's essential. High flavonoids, all of this thing, high alkalinity, high electrical. This is exactly where you want to go. Astringents, high enzymatic foods, raw, raw, raw. It's like Juno or whoever this guy is, is you cook your grape juice and then put a little lemon to revitalize it. What? That's stupid thinking. You don't process anything like that. It's ridiculous. So you want a high grape diet, high fruit diet, whatever. Especially the watery fruits. Definitely the watery fruits. And start, you know, breaking up that blood, getting that blood pH back to normal. That's the beauty of fruits. It, it, it has a perfect uh, residual effect of creating blood at 7.457, 7.4, probably a little higher, which is probably a little better in terms. That's why we're down on Keegan Waters when they're trying to put 9 in the blood. Now you're creating alkalosis. Trying to bring the blood pH way up, but you can't alter the blood pH. It's already been proven. Too low acidosis, too high alkalosis. Obviously, there's a certain pH, and you can't get beyond that. But interstitially, the blowback, possible. So there's two factors you have to look at. I would be on circulation formulas, herbal circulation formulas for dang sure. I would also be looking at cleaning up the lungs of all the mu mucus and build up in there. So I'd be on some either three lung tea or some uh, lung formulas to break up sputum. But where else am I going to go? I'm going to try to get into those interstitial spaces. Well, my only route is whatever the blood can bring into those remote areas, whatever goodies that you're putting in the blood can get those to those remote areas which is why the importance of fruits and berries and melons, but also I'm going to start opening up the eliminative organs of this gigantic lymphatic system. And this is for every single thing that you can write into me. This is for every single thing you can write into me. The only difference is that I'm real cautious about messing with the blood where there's tumors, because tumors are interstitial. When you watch Dr. Pimple Popper, ooh, Toe guy, I, I, I have to tell you, I think the, the toe bro's worse. It is the grossest, in my opinion. I think Dr. Pimple Popper has it better than toe bro. Oh, ugh. but when you see up and her, she squeezes and ooze that up, remember those with fighting tumors, that's what your body has to get rid of internally. And some of them are large and full of that nasty stuff. That's why a good, to me, a good surgeon is going to be like uh, Dr. Pimple Popper. Going internally and opening up these tumors and suctioning them out. Remove the sac if you can and then sew the person back up. You wouldn't even have to remove the, the tissue. Let us finish all that up. But no... No, can't be that nice and simple. They can't be that level of awareness. So they have to try to fry the tumor to get to a cancer cell to already deal with the stupidity. Phenomenal. So you've got to go, always go after the kidneys and adrenals. Remember, the adrenals are always, you got adrenals, kidneys, lymph. Those three are triplets. Always triplets. They follow. Matter of fact, let me be say here, you get two or three kidney formulas, one lymphatic formula and adrenal formula initially. Everybody does. Because that's the doorway to all of this. Changing the diet is UNO number one. That's immediate effect upon the blood. Immediate. 
The problem is malabsorption. And a lot of people are gravely malabsorbed. So it just takes a little time to affect this. I would love to see IV herbs. But oh no. Uh, hospitalized two weeks. My INR has never stabilized between two to three. So I finally asked if I could just get off of Warfarin. No, but was then put on Eliquis. Although I have had no side effects, I live in fear of an aneurysm. No kidding. I know. I know. And another thing is check your parathyroid. You know, check your parathyroid. Make sure you're utilizing calcium too. Look for other signs. Varicose veins, spider veins, bruising easy. Hernias, aneurysms, things like this. Uh, and that will be very helpful. A high electrolyte. Uh, all these things help to break up uh, solidifications and masses, enhance uh, uh, nerve uh, uh, vicosity and things like this. I need to know if through your program one can get off of these types of blood thinners. I live in Texas but am willing to travel to be healthy. Peggy, you don't have to travel anywhere. That's why I do these videos. Don't have to spend the money. I'd rather see you guys uh, learn on these videos. You, we do Skype appointments here. You don't have to travel here. You know, some child service, some people freak out because, oh, you mean you don't have to see them in person? Why would I have to see you in person? Health is simple. Life is simple. I don't need to look at every orifice of your body and do all that kind of stuff. That's stupid. We already know what the problem is. So, uh, no, no. Get yourself on a, on a protocol and go after this. 14-week protocol is adequate, although I would put you on circulation formulas immediately, upper and lower. Probably put you on the lung formula as well to help break up some of this congestion in these tissues that you might not even realize is there. Take a picture of your eyes and see what condition your lymphatic system is. But uh, you want to be on a fruit diet, fruit, berries, and melon diet like now. I wouldn't even mess with vegetables, the vitamin K's and all that crap they talk about. No, I still wouldn't mess with vegetables. I would stay with the fruits and the berries and the melons, especially if I'm having blood clots. Amin, I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. Hello, Dr. Morris. I'm Amin from uh, Armenia, and I'm glad I found you, but I think a little late. What are we talking about here? My mother diagnosed with stage four, her two plus breast cancer, which metastasized to the bone, skull, ribs, pelvis, spine. Three years ago, had six sessions of chemo and 20 sessions of radiation. Also, 18 injected uh, uh, Herceptin and 24 injections of Zometa, whatever that is, some type of, oh, it's a Zolodromic, something like that, acid. You know, if you look at Tobro, here it's in your face, when he cuts out these ingrown toenails, what does he put in those places that he cut out the ingrown toenails? Acids. He says, I got to put acids in here to stop it from growing again. I'm just saying. It's all over when you look at it. When you look at truth, it's all over the place. She backed to normal life for a small amount of pain until four months ago her markers began to rise. That's what I call, my dear one, the chemo radiation blowback. And it can be a nightmare from hell because all they did was suppress the stats. You can burn someone up pretty good. That's just what they do to her is burn her up inside. And then, oh, everything looks good. Yeah, the blowback's coming. That's the problem. And then they blame your cancer, which is a disease coming from Hellville that no one knows anything about, is spreading. It's coming to get you. And it's going to take your life. These guys exacerbated the problem a million times fold. They're part of the problem, not part of man's solution. If you can survive these things, you know, you always see the brain cancer free once in a while on this sort of thing. Really, if you read the undertone, it's in remission. Once in a while, you'll get, you'll get a tumor free or something like that, but it's rare. Rare. And then, of course, you're just up to have it again, have it all over you because you, you don't understand the system involved and all of this. So it doesn't matter the stage. Stage four, yeah, chronic area, no problem. But it doesn't mean death. It means you really got your get your butt in gear and get on a great diet. You know, if it's me and I'm stage four anything, I'm going immediately on a great diet. 
dark as organic as I can find. I'm going to be on a grape diet. Now I'm going to investigate the herbs to go after my lymphatic system. I'm going to go after kidneys aggressively, two or three formulas. I'm going to go after my adrenal glands. Uh, I'm going to go after my uh, uh, my lymphatic system. Uh, I'm going to clean up my GI tract because that remember that's the trunk of a tree that goes everywhere. So uh, I'm going to do some of these things to go after myself aggressively. Absolutely, because. The treatment is what's getting you, you know. You can sit there and allow the lymphatic system to back up and to back up, and it's going to burn places, and yeah, 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 and you're going to break down cells, and la di da So just get on, you know, unless you're burning your whole body up. What really accelerates death is the chemo and all that by a thousand times. What well, was it? We've got study after study, and a couple of them are from very reputable universities, uh, showing that if you don't do chemo, you'll live 12 times longer. And some people will live the rest of their life without it, because you're diagnosed with one or two cells that are damaged, and maybe a little tumor here or there, you're going to pull the scare fear and kill yourself. Yeah. You know, and they wonder, well, we tried all these injections, we tried radiation, we tried chemo, none of these are effective because your monster cancer that they didn't, uh, they didn't, uh, don't know anything about uh, is now getting you. You've got to get out of that level of thinking because that is like the lowest level of thinking that there is. That, that level of thinking is amazing, and, and yet. These people are allowed to have license to kill people, license to give people Drano, and all these things. And we've set these jokers up. And it's time people wake up. The medical profession is not where you want to go when you're in trouble with your health. Unless you need surgery or an emergency room. And that's what that should be for. Emergency room should dictate whether you need surgery. And if not, you need to be sent to a naturopathist. You can't even go to a nature path anymore because they've been taught medical. You know, to me, most naturopathic physicians are medical doctor wannabes. Because if you're a true nature path, you don't want to do anything medical. Naturopathy has nothing to do with medicines, the treatment of diseases. Matter of fact, we teach against that type of thing, but there's not a lot of us out there. Matter of fact, very, very, very few. But That's why we're trying to make a difference. I'll put any of you guys that have been watching our YouTubes and have been healing others up against any nature path in this world. And they've been to school trying to learn a little bit about natural healing. But then get away from uh, uh, high protein diets. You know, in in, in the natural health field, I've been in this almost 50 years. I can tell you, getting into it years ago, the first thing you eliminate is meat. Dead animal tissue. That's the first and foremost thing you eliminate. Now you want to get organic meat and you want to have high protein. Do really? That's not natural health. Not at all. That's medical thinking. You might have a natural health practitioner telling you that. It shows there, woohoo, cuckoo. Stupid. And this has been, you know, I, I, I've helped to bring this natural health field up into a level that you guys are seeing. And it, it is not moving well following me. You guys are. But we have to bring the natural health people in line with this. Even supplement makers are still involved in treatment-based thinking. So we've got a lot to do in terms of raising the consciousness or the awareness of even the natural health field. Who cares what happens to the medical field? People are going to run from them one of these days. And a lot of them are going to go to jail. When it's found out truly about chemistry and what chemo is really doing to people, it's going to be a crime to administer it. It's Drano. Who in their right mind, you go in front of a, a judge or something and say, well, you know, this, guy, this doctor recommended me take Drano. Or how about Connecticut, whose Supreme Court said, yeah, take that 17-year-old and give her Drano. Yeah. Those guys should have been marched right down to the local jail. Stupid. Crazy. 
So let me see. I can venture to go uh, for a raw vegan diet, especially juice fasting, carrot and apple, and vegetable juice. You know, those are the old days, guys. Those are the old days. I've been on so many carrot juice fasts, I can't even name them. Right. Now, say so. Do this for me. Even, even who is this that wrote here? Oh, I'm in. Put yourself on a week of carrot juice. And then put yourself on a week of, of, of uh, dark grape juice. Concord grape juice. And then put yourself on a week of lemon juice. And you tell me the difference. Huge. Uh, and two coffee enemas per day. You know, again, you're giving her an acid enema. And you're overstimulating tissue. What are you, what, what are you going to accomplish with that? So when you have stimulation, you have innervation. You know, you don't want to play the teeter-totter game. The teeter-totter is creation. And that's what I'm talking about, thoughts and things like this. It's teeter-totter. You know, what you stimulate, you end up innervating. It's like this. The, 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 you know, and go, going back to Gerson again. You know, that's old school thinking, but they never grew up. It's like, it's like the uh, Hippocrates. They never grew up. They're stuck in there's these mindsets, and they never grew up. So whatever you stimulate one day, you innervate the next. It's like, it's like laxatives, stimulants. You take stimulants, and then your bowels don't want to work at all after a while. Coffee enemas. I, I, I had a dentist to come in here and been on coffee enemas for years, and I said, I know why you're in to see me then. He said, why? And I said, you can't poop it on now, can you? And he said, no. You innervated yourself right on down. You know, you can't do that. That's not going to make the lymph system work any better. There, there is a simple chemistry pathway here, and it is the alkaline pathway. You can't try to, to, to ram a bull up someone's butt when you pull the panic button. When you realize truth, you can't ram a bull up. You have to allow for proper ionization to go on here, and that is hydration. And that takes place on these high, powerful juice or, or high fruit uh, programs. At the same time, we can bring our brother and sister in of the botanical kingdom and help to enhance the function of the cells and the tissues we need to and help to pull on the lymphatic system, clean the blood. So botanicals are incredible. That's why I don't get into supplements, isolates. Well, that, that's treat, treatment. And what are you trying to treat? You know, your body's reacting to chemistry. When you see tumors, it's a reaction to your chemistry, your lifestyle. Added on top of what your mother gave you lymphatically. So you're trying to treat your lifestyle with the same type of chemistry and playing those games that, you, that got you here. You've got to radically understand that foods fall into two categories just like chemistry. You have acid ash foods and you have alkaline ash foods. There's only one answer when you're acidic. Only one. And it's easy. Now, Understanding the lymphatic system a little more and the kidney connection, the skin connection, the adrenal to kidneys and the thyroid to skin, that is very helpful in enhancing the function of these tissues to help you get, as you're hydrating through your diet, to help this uh, pathway to open up better. That's all it is. Because with anything else, you're trying to treat a condition you don't understand. Coffee enemas and things like this. And I mean, it's a good jump from your mother from where she was. I'm not complaining or bitching, but let's take her up to the top of the mountain because she's in trouble. So you want to take her to the top of the mountain when you're in trouble. Um, yeah, also, she said, I don't want uh, Zometa anymore, and we stopped taking Zometa. Last month, severe pain came in her back and pelvic area. Well, they, you know, all the chemo and radiation has probably broke down her bone cell. Throw the word metastasize out. Go let a medical doctor chew on that for a few years. The system, the whole system's down, and they went in and they burned on top of the already three H burn, three pH burn. They went right on top of that and burned her more aggressively. So they 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 break down bone cells and all these other cells, and then you go, oh, these are cancer cells. Your your cancer been moved on you. That's their way of trying to protect themselves or what they're doing to you. No. Scan show bone mets uh, growing fast to her skull and spine and pelvic uh, bones. Well, everywhere there's interstitial spaces, she's in trouble. So where is that? Everywhere. 
everywhere. The pain was so severe that no painkiller could reduce her pain. I feel sorry for her. I feel sorry for these people that are victims of the AMA, but or, or medical thinkers. But remember, this is all karma, and we have to help others undo their karmatic bondage. And uh, this poor thing needs some help. There was no choice but radiation. After 20 sessions of limited radiation, oh really? Yeah, we're going to limit the chemo we give you. We're going to limit the radiation we give you. Her pain is much better now. Oh no, wait till the blowback comes. Wait till the blowback. You know, they can destroy the nerve endings and stuff like that. Just wait till the blowback. I know radiation put more toxins in her body and it burned her. But we don't know what to do uh, with her pain. You know what? I feel really sorry for this lady. But you're going to have to find, you know, an even morphine sulfate. That's about as strong as you can get, except this new painkiller. And it's like uh, ten times stronger than uh, fentanyl. Probably take her right out. The only way to start going after that pain is on the alkaline side of chemistry. Her doctor suggested chemo, but we said no. He told us at least you should go to uh, uh, Hepsiptin and Zometa again, and the advancing of bone tumors is a result of the banding. You know, these guys are just saying king, king, size, stupid, stupid, stupid. Your mom is in deep, 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 deep trouble, my friend. And until she gets onto these higher levels of understanding, she's going to continue to play this ping pong ball of the medical profession. I feel guilty about it, but I thought it's an acidic drug and it's a toxin to her body. Go back to the first word you used, acid. doesn't matter whether it's a toxin, it's an acid. And all acids could be considered toxins. Now, dear Dr. Morris, please tell us what should we do right there. You jump her on a high fruit diet, grapes, not, not, not lemon juice, not orange juice, not anything that's acidic juice. Go to the grapes, dark organic grape juice, have her live on it. Uh, at the same time, you want to use herbs to get in there and get those kidneys moving, go, go down this pathway. Using uh, uh, these two drugs along with fruit diet, I mean you could initially, you could, I mean you could, and then titrate off of them uh, as you will, I guess. I mean, you could do that. Or we should just go with fruit diet only. Well, you know, you have to make those decisions. I can't make those decisions for you. It's not my place to do that. Because you have to determine. I'm not in any chemo meds or anything like that because you're, you're, you're playing this tug of war with everything. You're sitting on a barbed wire fence trying to straddle that. So I always think, is there any hope? It's getting down there, you know. But I would go aggressively and see what you can do. If you can get her kidneys to filter sooner than later, you might have a good chance to pull her out of this. Uh, the more tissue is damaged, the more difficult is the body to survive. The body cells are exclusively cells, and cells are structure function. Destroy the cells and you destroy structure function. The fluids are there just to help the cells clean and feed them. So if you destroy the cells of the human body, you're destroying the human body. And that's what radiation, chemo, that's what she's doing now. Her diet destroyed her body. And nobody is awake of that enough except those that listen to these YouTube places and start to learn about the raw living foods and the fact that man isn't designed to cook and process or put. No animal is. You can't feed your domesticated animals cooked to process foods or they come down with the same problems you do. This is not realistic. And feeding uh, herbivores grains is not realistic either. They'll get acidosis. What do you think Purina is pulling grains out of there? And like I said, if you want dog food, get rabbit doo-doo. Alkaline ash foods. Difficult. Is these, uh, in these many years, look at all the years that this poor lady has suffered. In your experience, did you ever have a patient with bone mets 
or her two cancers that healed from this disease with fruit diet are painkiller toxins too. I definitely have had cases that have pulled themselves out of these levels. Uh, but uh, I don't use just a fruit diet. I use botanicals aggressively. I would never do just a fruit diet with this level of a problem. Not at all. It would take too long. Uh, I don't treat diseases. So no one survived diseases. They're unsurvivable according to the AMA. But we don't look at it, we don't look at her trouble as a disease problem. Her problem came in with her diet and she created too much acidosis, breaking down kidneys, GI tract, whatever. Take a look at her genetics, see what's going on there. And this is a lymphatic stagnation. She's, she's, she, is, she is dying on her own sewage. She's dying on her own sewage and the medical doctors are adding more acids to this acid sewage. And at a hotter pH, and then wonder, well, we're doing everything we can do, yeah, to accelerate her death. You know, like I said, you can burn things and make everything look good for a, for a short time, and then you have the blowback. <clears throat> Excuse me. The blowback is what your mom's experiencing, and it ain't good. High level pain, all these things like this. They they've got her up to these levels of. You know, difficulty. They're, they're taking her body into a corner that's hard to get out of. No question about it. But um, you got to try. It's your mom. You know, you got to try and whatever she's willing to do. If you have to use painkillers, my friend, you have to use painkillers. I would also use brain and nerve formulas to help enhance neurons since you're, you're, you're suppressing them. So it sounds like a little tug of war, but I would use painkillers, but enhance the function of neurons and also enhance the adrenal glands. You know, this is why we go into these tissues and enhance their function. We bring hydration, which is anti-pain. Pain is on the acid side of chemistry big time. And they're adding more acids into her body, which is accelerating the pain more. After chemo, her triglyceride levels gone high. You think? Why do you think that? Why do you think her lipids are going to skyrocket with that? After chemo, what side of chemistry is chemo on? It's not base. It's not alkaline. Nope. I mean, one day when they learn that, I might argue good alkaline chemo. Who knows? No, no, no. This is high acid chemo. So what system buffers acids in the body? There's only one. <laughs> only one. The lymphatic system. And what is its base? Lipids. Cholesterol specifically, but lipids. So yes, your, your triglycerides, your lipids are going to skyrocket. Your cholesterol can start placking all through you. Then start off shutting off circulation. I mean, it, they're killing her. And she's killing, she's killed herself. So. Pull her back from all that if you want to save her. My opinion. And her LDL, 212, but she was on strict low natural olive oil and no sugar and no uh, dairies after her treatments in these three years. Okay, so oils. Why are you giving her oils? I mean, I, I'm not opposed to coconut oils and stuff like that. It might be something you might think about is giving your, your mom some coconut water. Getting some things that are a little more uh, oil-based. But you can't do too much of that because then you start affecting the blood. And you start, even though oils are more absorbed into the lymphatic system, but you have major stagnation in her lymph system. That's why I'm afraid to even do castor oil packs because you have highly agglomerated areas adding more oils to this. Now, it can help the pain. You know, you might give her some CBD oil if that's even allowed where you are. You know, some high CBD oil and see if that will help with her pain. Or you could give her, um, uh, I used to give MS and these sort of things, uh, evening primrose oil or something like that. Maybe that will help her pain. But you don't want to give her too many oils because then you get uh, ketosis and things like this. Uh, the no sugar, and you have to have sugar. Let's define sugar. <clears throat> you have to have simple sugar or your mom ain't going to make it, period. Fruit is simple sugar. Vegetables are simple sugar. Mandatory. 
for human survival. We've talked about this quite a bit. Uh, dairy products, no kidding. She should have stopped that a long time ago. Meats, any acid ass foods. Are you kidding? Uh, also, after a raw vegan diet, her alkaline phosphatase goes from 66 to 380. Well, that's probably bone. Could, could be liver. You know, with chemo and all of that, alkaline phosphatase, guys, is either liver, it's a liver enzyme, but also going to be kidneys and bone. So looking at her with the bone issues, you could, that's either bone, you could probably guess it's part of all three because chemotherapy destroys all tissue, all tissues. So flip a coin, doesn't matter, all threes. But I'd be going after the liver anyway because of the chemo. I'd be having all liver herbs big time, the barbarous family big time. Are you kidding? Direct bilirubin, very low. Well, you know, her liver enzymes are 93. Well, that's not too bad. A little elevated. They should be, you want your liver enzymes, AST, ALT, you want them around 15 to 20 at best. So they're not sky high, so that alkaline phosphatase is, so I would probably be looking, yeah, a little liver, but I'd also be looking at bone as possibly a part of that. Creatine 1.2. Now, the creatine 1.2, that's her kidneys. So that's already breaking down on her. You want, despite what blood biochemists say, you don't want your, your creatinine to be over 0.6. And if you're 0.6, I've still got a little eyebrow up. But 0.7, my eyebrows are going up on you. They, they, in a lot of labs in America, 1.2 is in normal range now. They've, they've increased it from 0.9 to 1.2, 1.3. When you pass one, you're in trouble. You're in trouble at 0.9. You're probably not filtering at 0.7, and you could not be filtering at even 0.5 yet. Just because the kidneys are not breaking down yet, still could be swollen with inflammation, edema from acidosis within the kidney tissues. So you always want a creatinine low. The lower the better. 1.5, uh, 0.4, yeah. But you also want the bun down there too. That's your rea nitrogen. You want your bun along with that to be down to 0.4. You want the lab to take it low. Good, thanks. So I don't see, I mean, these liver enzymes are not that high. I mean, we get them up there in the hundreds, guys. But uh, your AST is getting up there. But the alkaline phosphatase, this, if, if it's pointing my finger at a little liver, but I'm looking more at bone. Even with a kidney 1.5, you were alkaline phosphatase wouldn't be that high. Uh, you might maybe a threes, fours, but uh, your mom, you know, the kidneys are the problem to get in the get go, and this just shows you right here where the problem is. The, this number makes us nerves and don't know why everything is getting worse. You don't know? Come on, man. You know, her kidneys are down. She's going to go into kidney failure anyway with the chemo and everything else. And so that's what finally ends, ends life there is kidney failure. Well, her creatine's going up. Your alkaline phosphatase, I mean, why wouldn't you have these high numbers? What are you doing to fix these numbers? What have you done to help her body? A raw vegan diet? No, she needs a fruititarian diet. She needs to be on a raw grape diet. And then you want to add botanicals in there like crazy. What do you think God gave the herbs for to sit there and whistle Dixie? Uh-uh. Mm-mm. They're there to use. That's why, we, that's why China and India are some of the premier users of botanicals. And for centuries, man has just turned his educated eye the other way or the nose the other way. Oh, really? Well, let me tell you, our educated noses are going to be going right back to them and going begging God, thank you. Let's raise more of them. Let's grow more of them. Thank you, Dr. Morrison. God bless you for taking care of sad and hopeless people, helpless people like us. Well, you know what? I love you, man. But uh, go after your mom. Go after your mom. I can't advise you to come off of uh, medications, but if it was me, I'd be changing the way I think. I'd be looking at more of our videos and uh, really getting yourself aligned with that level of thinking if it's me. All right, I got time for one more. I cannot pronounce your name. Which treatment for prostate cancer stage four? Well, let's just lump all these things together because they all are saying the same thing. 
First of all, let me make it perfectly clear that we do not treat cancer. It's not because I want to keep my butt out of trouble. It's because it's the wrong way to look at it. Cancer is a fabrication of the medical mind. If you have a damaged cell in the prostate, and I've seen them poke that prostate many times to find a damaged cell. So, you know, when they, when they do a biopsy, you know, they're trying to find a, a cancer cell. And that, that supposedly gives them, I guess, jurisdiction to give you a grano, I guess. I don't know. You'd have to look at the laws and stuff. <laughs> stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Assume that there are cells that have been damaged to the point of no return. Assume that. How does your body get rid of those cells? There's only one, one pathway. And it ain't the blood. There's only one pathway. It's in your A and P. You know, but I, they seem to forget that coursework, I guess. That one pathway is where? Lymphatic, lymph tissue, interstitial fluids. Just call it lymph fluids because it's just what it is. And the lymph nodes is where what? The macrophages are, right? The problem is, is when you get stagnation, that's when you see cancers that are break or cells that are breaking down. You don't get cells that are breaking down when you don't have stagnation of lymph. That's just inflammatory problems when you start to see it starting to back up. But the next stage from that is going to be the breaking down of tissue. And we talk about intracellular and extracellular. You know, what goes on inside of a cell and what goes on outside of a cell. Whenever you retain acids, think of a baby's bottom when a diaper hasn't been changed for quite a while. The blowback is burning. Acids burn. They are corrosive to cells. You don't stick your, stick your finger in corrosive acids and, and be happy. You don't drink Drano. They give it to you through your aorta, but you don't drink it on purpose. If this chemo was renamed Drano, would you still take it? The pH is probably very similar. Would you take it? Hell no, you wouldn't take it. So we changed the name, put it chemo. Maybe you should call it acido. You know, we have to teach each other chemistry a little bit, basic chemistry. And there's no one on this planet that can deny it because they are factually the two pillars of chemistry. Who, who can deny that? You might get chemists to argue alkalosis, but they're going nowhere with that. You can demonstrate that metabolic wastes are acids, not alkalis. You can, you, you can demonstrate it just by bunking their theory by putting you on an alkaline diet, showing you how it, re, it gets rid of acidosis, it gets rid of man's symptoms and problems. Oh. Protein diets, we can demonstrate that all day long in their face. When you go on a high protein diet, your enzyme skyrocket, your, your cancer marker skyrocket. Oh. But no correlation to medical mind, stupid mind, to facts. Sorry, but you know what? Sometimes you have to get a little aggressive when people like this are allowed to do the things they do to humans. You have to stand up against this sort of abuse and atrocities. These are atrocities. Against humans because of ignorance. And we can't allow that to happen anymore. That's why all these questions, all these poor people are suffering. I, we've got stacks and stacks waiting for me to answer. I can't get to them. But what applies to one human applies to us all. We're all homo sapiens. We're all from the same species. Now what color, race, creed, who cares? We're all homo sapiens. Yes, we have genetic lineages, absolutely. And they're different than others and others. Yeah, 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 I get that. But we're all cellular bodies with two fluids. End of story. Ones have some female parts, some have male parts. Duh. They're still cells with two fluids. I found your info during some research online regarding cancer and the alternative methods to remedy to it. My father has metastasitic, again, metastasized prostate cancer, right? Uh, da 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 da. 
In other words, his lymphatic system's down and he's burning his prostate bad. But you have to understand that his pelvic area and all these other areas are also prone because the lymph system is stagnant there too. Wherever those pathways are uh, stagnant, the lymph nodes are swollen hard enough to not allow passage through. But where is the cause of the problem? No matter what tissue, prostate, brain cancer, lung cancer, toe cancer, eye cancer, uh, heart cancer, uh, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, where's the problem start? Kidneys and adrenal glands, always, 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 they're the eliminative organs. And if your thyroid is down, which from the same problem, then our skin goes down. Our skin goes down last because your kidneys go down first. Why? Acid ash diets. Acid ash diets. We're we're right in line with the World Health Organization findings that acid ash diets, high protein diets are linked to colon cancers. Go ask them. They don't call it acid ash diets, but that's what a protein diet is. The patient 69 had a surgery on January 22nd, 2015 due to a tumor compressing the spinal cord. See? Pelvic, the whole area. And of course L4 and L5 are the vertebrae related to the kidneys and of course they're going to break down. You can get tumors around those. I mean it's just, you know. After wearing a urinary catheter for about two months, his urinary sphincter was back to normal and is able to walk properly. Uh, After the surgery, he also got 12 sessions of radiation. You know, it's funny. Once they cut out stuff, they still want to radiate it. It's funny to me. You still want to destroy cells so your patient will be back to see you again. I get it. To remove the rest of his vertebral tumor, which wasn't completely removed during the surgery. Oh, so you're going to radiate the spinal column, huh? Oh, that's fun. Also, his bone metastasis isn't causing him any pain, but the bones... uh, whatever, that he uh, does every year shows that some of those metastasized disappear, some seem to get bigger, smaller, etc. Well, the same system is going to destroy all of that. This is a system that he has down. The body has systems, divided up into systems. And we'll be talking about that in class this, uh, this next week. And you have to address this system, the great lymphatic system or what's known as the body's main immune system. Thank you very much. But these are autoimmune problems. Uh, He takes every day one pill. (laughs) I don't know what these are. Uh, uh, Zactrol and uh, Casodex. Are these chemo pills? I mean, how stupid. Uh, His oncologist also recommended him injections of Lupron every three months. Well, according to the World Health Organization, I've said this before, that Rubidex and Tamoxifen are the female side of of Lupron, and they suppress either estrogen or testosterone. And we have discussed this on other videos. These are minor acids in the human body, but they're willing to give you major acids. Interesting. We're going to suppress your minor acids, which suppresses the adrenal gland. So now you're, you, you don't, you produce low steroids of both calibers. So now your adrenal steroids are low and now cholesterol is going to start coming in. And your cholesterols are going to start going up. A lot of, it's just a never ending story with these guys. But we're going to give you a, an acid hotter. We're going to suppress your acid, your minor acid of estrogen and testosterone, but we're going to give you a hotter acid as chemo. Huh. Uh, don't get that. Doesn't compute. Every three months, he never did it because of the heavy side effects. Duh. Anyway, the health World Health Organization considers these carcinogenic to themselves. Uh oh. Uh oh. So we're going to give you a carcinogen which is a cancer-causing substance to suppress minor acids. Then we're going to give you a hotter acid on top of that. Sounds like cookies and ice cream to me. He, he used also to take one teaspoon or tablespoon of pumpkin oil at night and one glass of blueberry juice every morning. So I get that. That's good. 
on top of all the other stuff. You know, that's like uh, throwing a little uh, bicarbonate into a, a big vat of Coke. Think it's going to neutralize the whole vat of Coke. I don't know. The patient has absolutely no pain. Well, that's when you want to get them the most. Better than this other one that has excruciating pain, right? But I tell you, it won't be long. And pain will set right in, especially if these are chemo pills. It won't take long. And pain will start coming little at a time, little at a time, and then more severe, more severe as the, the pelvic area breaks down, the back breaks down more, that sort of thing. But he, he do still have metastasized, and we're afraid to face again the same situation. Oh, you're not out of the first one. What are you talking about? You're not even after on the first one. You haven't fixed anything here. This guy's not out of anything. This guy's just walking himself deeper to Hellville every day. I wonder, just waiting for all of that to come back on him. In January 2015, his PSA's levels was at 5,000. <laughs> Well, that's one of the highest I've seen. I had a gentleman, I won't name any names, but a famous guy, had 2,700 when he came in to see me. I sent him down to the lab because I knew he was in trouble. The lab called me and said, this, has, this isn't a misnumber, 2,700. And I looked at him and I says, you know, don't you? And he said, yeah, I've already been to medical doctor. And I said, well, why are you trying to fool me? And that was 2,700. Dr. Jensen had 1,600. <clears throat> and uh, it was all through his pelvic area. So at 5,000, I can guarantee you he's probably got it all through him. Now that's if you run the same stats. To give you an idea, PSA should be below 3. And that's been a test for years. But they, they changed it and made it below 4 now. They keep, in, keep raising that number. So if you're 5, you're good. No, you're not. I had a guy in here with PSAs of two, prostate cancer. Just saying. 5,000, deep trouble. Deep trouble. That's why you see it in the spine and everywhere else. You might not, you know, just because they haven't picked every cell. So what if you have a cancer cell? You've got to understand a cancer cell is just a damaged cell. You've got to go after what's damaging and breaking down these cells or tissues. That's what's getting them acids are getting them and gradually decreased since then and the lowest was 14. It'll explode again my friend. It'll explode again. And one guy was in here and he had his prostate removed and they still put him on Lupron and I'm telling him no you're suppressing your adrenals and you need your adrenal glands to be healthy to get your kidneys to filter and all that. So I said you you know do what you want but if it's me I always tell you what I would do for me. What you do for yourself, you do for yourself. But I'm not going to take it. So then his PSA started climbing. It was zero after they removed it. Zero. Oh, perfect. They look at stats. Perfect, right? They don't look at what's causing this and the fact that didn't do anything about that. So he has no prostate. So then he's on Lupron and this and starts climbing. 30s. They're they're. they're they're drawing back on me. Why is it climbing for? You know, I'm on your program. I said, you know, get yourself filtered and keep going. Well, I did, forgot about the loop run. Then it hit in the 70s. And I'm just sitting here, and of course, God gave me a little, hey, remember? So I, I, she called me and was bitching at me, and I'm going, let me ask you. Are you still on the loop run that uh, he was taking? Uh, uh, yeah. So he stopped it. 70, 30, 20. I'm just saying. That's just one experience of mine. But since few months, it started raising again. I'm just saying. Now it's back up to 145, which is astronomical. Should be below 3. So you tell me, what do you recommend to cure him and eradicate this metastasis? Go after the cause of the problem, my dear one. Go after the cause of the problem, the great lymphatic system. And I've been teaching that and teaching that for years and years and years. 
that uh, here, here's one in the, it lives in the United Arab Emirates. I read your book and saw your videos and I'm now really impressed you are doing a good job. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, my mother is a lung cancer. There you go. Same thing. Same thing here. The tumor is in the lower left lobe. Already six chemo rounds uh, done, but there is no reduction in the size. Yeah, matter of fact, that if anything is going to make it grow. Uh, again, same thing, fruit diet, fruit diet. You really want to get on a grape diet here. Now, I would be on the three lung tea, inhaling it and drinking it, especially now. If she's getting uh, edema in the lungs, then you can't, you've got to be careful with how much fluid that she's on, but she's going to have to have it aspirated. If her lungs start filling up, my dear one, do not uh, cut down on fluids, have her just eat grapes, but uh, don't let that scare you. Just so her lungs will have to be aspirated when she can't breathe well, but keep on going and then her lungs at one time will stop filling up with fluid. Uh, we've seen this over and over and over again, but you might have to have her lungs aspirated every once in a while, throw a synthesis, you know, and go that way, but uh, keep going. Uh, this idea of chemo and trying to get rid of tumors, I mean, they're just trying to burn it out. And here's a good example where you can't do that. Again, I'd have her deep breathe. Have her deep breathe. Learn how to breathe properly into the lower lobes. In other words, your fr first breath should never raise you thoracically. Your first breath should raise you abdominally. Down here, not here, not this, this. You know, and breathe in and get that oxygen down in those lower lobes. Now, the lung formula, I'd be on the lung formula probably a little more aggressively, maybe a dropper full, dropper and a half full, maybe every four hours. I'd be after those kidneys, those adrenals, that GI tract. I'm going aggressively after this case, right? Now, she's going to come down with a lot of mucus, maybe even pneumonia-like symptoms. So, let that stuff come out because she's going to spit up some gnarly, gnarly crap, guaranteed. So, let it come out no matter what. You want to see the green, the brown, and maybe even the black come out of her. Forget the clear mucus and the yellow mucus. That's that's going to, you're just breaking in the doors right then. So a lot of stuff's going to come out of her and good, but you want to see sediment. Remember the sediment in the urine right here, vital to see that. Uh, after watching your videos, we already started a raw fruits and vegetables. Yeah, amen. Now can you guide us what else we can do? Specific foods, anything else? Grape diet immediately. Grapes only. I'd probably do grapes over grape juice, but I would drink and sip on the three lung tea off and on throughout the day. These herbs are designed for breaking up hardened sputum, tumors, things like this. And, and of course, she's going to start coughing and cough this stuff out. You want her cough with production. You don't want dry coughs. And that's why this is important to hydrate and not have her having dry coughs. This can hurt her diaphragm and things like that. <clears throat> you can work on the neural lymphatic points, particularly in the upper from the neck down to the mid of the back, that's kidneys up to the lungs. Work on those neural lymphatic points. That'll help big time break this loose. These sort of things. Uh, really, I am help, a uh, helpless person. If you help me, I always be thankful. Well, always, always, my dear one, always here to help. That's the whole thing. That's what I do in this case. Uh, again, with the herbs, also with the kidneys, the uh, the adrenals, the GI tract, the lymphatic system. I'm going to pull that way. Absolutely going to pull that way. But a lot of this is going to want to come up and out. I guarantee you that too many lung cancer cases in my world are those with lung tumors, whatever you want to call it, and uh, get them out of there. <clears throat> The less you do any type of, uh, of damage to those tissues, you don't want a biopsy, you know, who cares? You got a tumor, go after the tumor, which is going after the lymphatic system. But again, a lot's going to break up, a lot of coughing up of nasty stuff. And again, remember, if lungs start filling up and she can't breathe, she has to go in and have her lungs aspirated. Don't fear that. It just has to be. Just one of the bad, nasty side effects of, of, of having high acidosis in the lungs. You know, it's edema. And that's true anywhere and everywhere in the body around the heart the same thing guys same thing that's why you've got to go after this lymphatic system aggressively and that's how I would go after that one love you guys take off after these cases guys these are vital cases but this applies for everyone in the same conditions except when your lungs you use lung formulas like three lung tea but you can use three lung tea with any swollen lymph nodes throughout the body absolutely love you guys I'll get this up just as soon as I can love you now